Alright, take 77. Okay, well, I am Sonny Yahweh. I wrote this book called uh, Thy Black Holes in Life. In fact, we're just full of black holes everywhere. It's, it's everywhere you want to turn, you know, doorknobs come off in your hand and, you know, things fall out the sky from birds that are flying too low, that sort of thing. And this book is kind of as memorable as those special and rare occasions in life that do rise up. It's uh, not a help book or how-to book or anything like that. It's an inspirational writing that I think, you know, I mean, it's hard to find a book out there that the whole family can actually read, and that's what this is. It's something that can actually be a foundation, a fictional foundation, as much as Harry Potter or and I hope there isn't no problem with mentioning his name. Uh, I guess you could always buy his book, and I think if you do, well, that lady will probably not sue me, so I think things will be fine. But anyway, this book is very memorable, and if you hold on for just a little bit of what I'm going to explain about it, I've got a health tip that will stay in your mind for as long as you live, you'll always remember this video, you'll remember the uh, health tip, and you'll also remember my book if you do take the time to read it. It's free, it's right down, it's down here inside this site someplace. I can't tell you exactly where it's at, uh, but you'll see it mentioned a few times within, because I want you to send that link off to your friends. I don't care if you do donate to uh, help me get this book published or not, I'm going to find some way to do it, and I'm already giving out the reward to anybody that desires the book for free. If you like the book and you decide that you'd like to have your name within the covers of this book, well, there are special rewards down there as well. Uh, also rewards, you know, for those that don't want their name in the book, but they, you know, like to go ahead and you know, have this book, you know, it's going to be a great blessing. It's like a companion to the Holy Scriptures that many believe are fictional. Uh, a lot of people don't have any understanding as far as a great story. I had my own brothers tell me, it's a great story, you know, but they didn't believe anything in it because they don't have the imagination, I guess. It's kind of like uh, Huckleberry Finn, and he's going down, you know, the Mississippi River on his little raft or whatever, catching, you know, fish. Well, you can learn, and it's not a how-to book, but you can certainly learn how to fish by listening and reading, you know, about Tom Sawyer going down the, the Mississippi River on that raft. Which kind of brings me up to a uh, little bit of a journey I took to Louisiana one day with a friend of mine. His name was Broussard, and he had some business in Louisiana. And as we're driving down the roads, and he was driving so crazy, man, I was screaming. My fingernail marks are probably still in the dashboard the way that uh, they drive out there. But anyway, you know, we got to his house, but before we did, I, I looked and I said, wow, I said, this is Broussard uh, Parish. And he's like, yeah, well, my friend was living in Broussard Parish, and his name was Broussard, or is Broussard, he ain't dead. Yeah, he's a great friend of mine. But anyway, we made it out to his house, and uh, it was a nice house, okay? And out, out there in the front yard, and I'm looking across the street, and the streets were real narrow and big old uh, bar ditches they call them here in Texas on each side and I noticed that there's this cane field, sugar cane and it was just that time of year where this sweet smelling odor was in the air I mean you could almost taste it, it was thick with sweetness as far as the eye could see it was like being in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory almost and then I looked over and I noticed you know there was this hole over in the lawn but they had the problem down there in Louisiana with moles a lot of time and they're just all over the place you see the little uh, uh, burrows you know on top of the ground where they're burrowing underneath and it pushes all the dirt up in a hill or whatever and Anyway, there was a hole 
and I noticed there was a papa mole and a mama mole and, and a baby bowl, mole down there. And I thought that was kind of odd because, you know, usually moles will have five or six babies from what I've been told. Have you ever seen a mole? I mean, they're, they're kind of homely and ugly and sickly, you know. That's what they look like. They're like the Lee twins, but they got this thing comes up out of their mouth. It, it, it just amazing they are so ugly that they're cute but anyway you know I looked over I noticed them and uh, well they can't see too well so they didn't see me that's I guess their smeller or something I don't know that's all over their face uh, and they just burrow in the in the dirt but Papa Mole he, he stuck his snout up in the air there you know they can't see too well but boy they can smell I guess they got that sense and Papa Mole comes back down in the hole after he, you know, gets off his tippy toes. And he says, well, Ma, he says, that sweet cane sugar across the street there, he says, boy, that sure smells so fine in the drifting air. And Ma pulls, and Mole, she says, you think so, Pa? He says, yeah, you ought to take a whiff. So, anyway, Mama Mole sticks her nose up there, you know, she's all the way up in her tippy toes because she wasn't quite as tall as Papa Mole. <coughs> and Baby Mole starts, you know, jumping up and down behind him a bit, you know, but she's got her nose up in the air and she sniffs. She says, oh, Pa, she says, that's not pure cane you're smelling. She says, that smells like fresh honey and, and boy them bees they must be working overtime well you know baby mole kept jumping up and down up and down you know and he's getting quite excited and papa mole's not too pleased about it you know he's like what what is wrong with you baby mole and baby mole looks up and he's got all these tears in his eyes and he's just so flustered man and and he kind of stuffs his little mole foot on the ground and he says papa mole papa mole you know you you i'm so small and you got your nose up and you smell pure cane sugar all across the street up in there Papa Mole says, well, yeah, baby Mole, I did, but what's with all this? He says, and Mama Mole, Mama Mole, she stuck her nose up and she smelled fresh, honey, and them bees must be working overtime. And Papa Mole's like, yeah, well, son, he says, what's with all this jumping up and down and you getting all excited about? Baby Mole says, well, he says, I'm too short, I can't jump all the way up, he says, and I'm jumping up, and I'm a jumping up, he says, and all I can smell is molasses. So the thing is, if you take molasses, okay, and, okay, it's over here, you take some, some molasses, okay, a tablespoon or so, and you mix in maybe like a teaspoon of baking soda, and you take that once or twice a day, Oh, you'll start feeling great because it'll get rid of a lot of candida out of you okay so you can also take a little bit you know with uh, warm water you can put in there if you want you know to swish it down but that's one tip I do believe that you'll never forget is that you really need your molasses okay now my book is the same once you read it and it's for free just download it and if you want to be part of the book, which isn't, you know, full of humor in such a way, but it's, uh, it does have a little bit of humor. It's got uh, mm, a lot of things I didn't even realize I was writing at the time, but when I went through the book, I almost amazed myself. So it's for free right now, and it's going to be for free forever. Send it off to your friends and such, but if they're going to want an edited copy, then they'll just have to be one of those that are seeking out the rewards in this here because this is special for a privileged few or however many desire to donate to have their names in this book forever and you really need to take a look over the book first to see if you really want your name in there if you don't it's not going to come out once it's in print it's forever and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and 
and all those that come. And it makes great gifts, you know. You can buy extra copies or whatever, which will be on, you know, Amazon or different bookstores that you could, you know, purchase the book later. But the reward for this, for you helping me and getting this done, this is my dream. I had a dream. I had a dream. And you're in it, if you so choose to be. So make your decision up. Download the book. It's right down there. You'll find it in the thing, you know, as soon as you're done with this here video, which is probably being clicked off right now. That's all you got to do is hit that little unplay button, and I'm gone. And until then, I say thank you very much, and I really, really would like to kind of, in a way, immortalize you. Uh, and if not, send the book off, send it to everybody you know, and let them read it as well. I think it, it'll be a, a great thing to read on an airplane or any place else you are, and it's the type of a book that you won't want to read just once. Believe you me, I've even edited it, you know. I've edited it, and I've edited it, and uh, I'll probably have to edit it again after the editor's done editing as well. So, thank you for participating. Whether you donated or not, I really don't care. Thanks for hearing me out, and don't forget your molasses. And until we meet face-to-face -face one day, which I hope we do, I say adieu. Bye-bye. Thank you.